Today, it's all about you, well, your inner leader, to be precise. We've got some really interesting stuff to dig into from leadership coach Pat. We do. Archetypes. Yeah, archetypes. Have you ever thought about, like, why some leaders have that commanding presence like a king or queen while others are all quiet wisdom and inspire you that way? It's so true. And Pat actually ties this back to some pretty profound stuff. I mean, he mentions patterns of leadership that have been observed for, like, centuries. Yeah. By philosophers, even? Yeah, exactly. These archetypes, they're like these universal characters. They keep showing up in the story of leadership across every culture throughout history. It's fascinating. It really is. And the best part is you don't have to be just one thing. It's not like you fit in a box. We're all a blend, a mix of all these different leadership styles. A perfect way to put it. We're like a musical ensemble. I like that. Each musician, they have their own unique sound, right? Right. But when you bring them all together, you get something so much richer, more complex, more harmonious. And it's the same with these archetypes. They're like those individual leadership sounds. Understanding them helps us see how everything comes together in the grand orchestra of leadership. Okay, so let's meet some of the musicians or I guess the archetypes in this leadership orchestra. Pad talks about six main ones. First up, the sovereign, think CEO with a crystal clear vision, captain of industry. They steer the ship with a firm hand. Ever worked with someone like that? Oh, absolutely. And it's a powerful archetype for sure. But it's not just about barking orders. You know, the best sovereigns, they create order. They set those clear boundaries. But there's always a sense of fairness. It's about empowering their teams by giving them a clear direction, making people feel secure and stable. Makes sense. All right. Switching gears here. Let's talk about that colleague who, like, thrives under pressure, mm. deadline approaching. No problem. They just power through, like, a force of nature. That's our warrior archetype. They're all about action, driven by results. And talk about resilience. They just roll with the punches. Challenges pop up. For a warrior, that's not a setback. It's a chance to test themselves and you know, see what they're really made of. If you need to get something done, no matter what, these are the people you want on your team. If they get things done. Okay, changing pace again. Let's talk about the sage. This is the quiet expert, the voice of reason everyone turns to. Their decisions are all about the data. Does that sound familiar to you? Oh, 100%. And they're constantly seeking, always digging for more knowledge, searching for the truth. That's what drives them. That ability to analyze any situation, cut through the noise, and then, bam, they hit you with these well-thought-out solutions. I love it. Okay, next we have the mystic. Visionaries, the innovators, think Steve Jobs changing the world with a single product launch. Hmm. They see the bigger picture, the potential, when everyone else is just stuck. These are the game changers. They have this incredible ability to inspire, to lead real transformation, because they're not afraid to challenge how things have always been done. Right. Pushing boundaries, envisioning completely new realities, that's the mystic. And they pull from this really interesting mix of intuition and strategic thinking. It's pretty remarkable. It really is. Okay, from the visionary to the collaborator, we have the lover archetype. Mm. And I bet you can already picture this one. This is the person who makes sure everyone on the team feels heard, valued. They prioritize harmony. They lead with their hearts. They build those strong connections, create that sense of belonging on a team. That's where they thrive. And they lead with empathy because they get it when a team is connected emotionally in sync. That's powerful. So true. All right. Last but definitely not least, we have the jester. Now, this one might seem a little out there in the world of leadership, but honestly, a little humor goes a long way. Oh, it does. Jesters bring that playfulness, that lightness, helps teams work through challenges with creativity, helps them stay flexible. What do you think? It's so important. Never underestimate the power of a jester. We all get a little serious sometimes. They're the ones who remind us to lighten up. And you know what? Often, that shift in perspective, it unlocks a creative solution no one else saw. They can totally reframe a problem, come up with a workaround, and they'll have you laughing along the way. It's amazing. I'm already seeing glimmers of these traits in people I've worked with. Have you noticed any of these archetypes in your own leadership style? You're already making those connections. That's great. And it shows just how much these archetypes, they resonate, you know, yeah. they connect with our real experiences. But you've hit on a really important point. It's not just about putting a label on ourselves, right? Like, oh, I'm a warrior and that's it. Mm -hmm. The real magic, the aha moment, it comes when we use this understanding, this knowledge of the archetypes to actually grow as leaders, to become even more effective at what we do. You're talking about self-awareness, aren't yes. you? That's the key, isn't it? It's that bridge between recognizing, oh, yeah, that's the sage in me mm -hmm. or the lover or whoever, and then actually using that knowledge. Right? Exactly. Imagine having 
this incredible toolkit. You've got all these amazing tools, all these different leadership instruments, mm. but you don't know how to use any of them, right? Yeah. That's what it's like without self-awareness. Self-awareness is how we learn to play those instruments. It's about knowing what each one can do, the strengths, the limitations. It's about understanding our own personal orchestra, you could say. I love that analogy. And it actually reminds me of something we came across in Pad's work. He quotes General David Petraeus. I mean, talk about a leader, right? Absolutely. And Petraeus said, self-awareness is the ability to understand your own strength and weaknesses, emotions and motivations, essential for effective leadership. That really gets to the heart of why this matters. When we're self-aware, when we really get ourselves, it means we can choose how we show up as leaders. Consciously choose, you know, like, okay, this situation, this team, they need me to play this leadership note, this archetype. It's about flexibility and awareness. So can you give us an example? How does knowing about these archetypes, how does that actually translate into, you know, real world leadership skills? Okay, picture this. You've got a leader and they've got a strong warrior archetype. They're decisive. They're all about action, maybe even a little impatient sometimes, you know, <laughs> driven. But here's the thing. Because they know this about themselves, because they're self-aware, they can start to build in strategies. They can actively work on inviting collaboration, making sure they're getting different viewpoints, creating space for others to be heard, even if it doesn't come naturally to them at first. It makes total sense. It's like they're learning to, like, balance that warrior boldness with a bit of the lover's collaborative spirit. Exactly. Or... Take the lover archetype. They're amazing at building harmony, creating strong relationships. That's their jam. But what happens when you need to make a tough decision? Or when someone needs some direct feedback, maybe even confrontation? That can be really tough for a lover. So they might need to tap into that inner warrior, you know? Yeah. Learn to advocate for themselves, advocate for their team, even when it feels uncomfortable. So it's about knowing our natural tendencies or go-to archetypes, but also realizing that, hey, we have access to all of them, right? All those leadership styles are in there somewhere. 100%. It's like leveling up, becoming this well-rounded, adaptable leader. And that's where PAD's work on the Team Me model comes in. Have you heard of that? I have. I know we probably don't have time to unpack the whole thing today, Russ, but it's something our listeners can explore, right? Absolutely. Think of it as a roadmap. It mm -hmm. can help you figure out your own unique archetype blend. How cool is that? I like it. A roadmap to your leadership potential. This mm. is really making me think. And not just about me personally, but all those dynamics you see playing out on teams, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Such a powerful lens, you know? Yeah. When you can recognize the archetypes in action, it's like you get this deeper understanding. You see everyone's strengths, but also those potential blind spots, those things they might not even realize are tripping them up. I'm with you. And it makes you wonder, right? Like, what happens when you have two totally different archetypes, maybe even clashing ones, leading a team together? Is that a recipe for disaster or can they actually complement each other? Such a good question. Let's say, just for example, you've got a sovereign and a warrior co-leading a company. What do you think? Oh, that's interesting. On the one hand, the sovereign's big picture vision combined with that warrior's drive, their execution power, mm. I mean, that could be unstoppable. They'd be unstoppable. But I can also see those two like butting heads if they're not careful. I know. Totally. Yeah. That's the thing about archetypes. It's not one good, one bad. Yeah. It's about understanding how they work together. Or imagine you've got a sage leading the team all about logic and data. Mm. And they've got this team member who's a total mystic, always pushing the boundaries, brainstorming these crazy new ideas. Ooh, yeah. That could go either way. Right. You could have a clash of styles or... Yeah. They could create something truly groundbreaking because they're approaching the problem from these totally different angles. It's like that tension, that creative friction can be a good thing if you harness it the right way. And that's what I love about this whole framework. It's not about saying, oh, you're the sage, so you always have to be the logical one. It's about realizing that, hey, we all have these different sides to us, these different archetypes within us. We can adapt. We can change how we show up, create a much smoother, more effective environment for everyone. Less friction, more understanding. Like we were saying before, fine-tuning that orchestra. I love that because that's really what effective leadership is all about, isn't it? It's about understanding yourself, okay. appreciating those different strengths everyone brings to the table, even the ones that seem like opposites. And then it's about learning how to orchestrate all those talents, bring them together to achieve something bigger than any one person could do alone. Such a powerful takeaway. See what you discover about yourself and the people you work with. Until next time. See you then.